What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 57 and today we have the second leg of the Europa League quarterfinal here against Napoli away in Italy. Yeah, so after the first leg we drew it one goal each. A very, very nervy and tense leg that was. We come here to Naples knowing we have to score because of Napoli's away goal. And I did mention, you know, this game is going to be one of the biggest of the series as we are so desperate to get ourselves into the semi and you know hopefully even the final um, as we look to have the aims of really winning this competition and winning two trophies this season. Um, with Napoli this is the first time we've taken a game into the second leg in this competition where we've been you know we're going to be the underdogs basically because in the first uh, two uh, two ties before this in the knockout ties we took on Eintracht Frankfurt we took a lead to Germany in the second leg in the game against Liverpool we took a lead to Anfield in the second leg this time we take a draw and an away goal conceded against us as well so we know that we are going to be not massive underdogs we can still beat them we can still get ourselves through but it is going to be very 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 difficult indeed but as you can see by my lineup I did pick a very strong side I really did want to qualify and I really wanted to make sure we get ourselves into the semi-final so a very very strong side there Berahino did drop to the bench um and each of you would start up with Niang. Obviously, those two as a partnership have worked well on a few, a few occasions this year. But the first chance would fall to us here in the seventh minute as we went in search of an early away goal. Uh, Gamboa striking it from range and our Costa Rican right back putting the ball just over the bar. And the score was scored. But ten minutes later, another great chance here as we go on the break. Wenison Silva has the pace to beat Gulam down his right-hand side. You can see me calling the players on the counter-attack, but there's only two in the box as Silva cuts inside. We stop the ball, scoop past the ball inside, and Nietzsche B wins the header. But unfortunately, he couldn't get it on target and it goes out for a goal kick. But a few minutes later, Niang tries to catch the goalkeeper Raphael out with a curling shot. And Raphael spills it and Anichibi misses another great header there. Really, really good chance. The best one in the game so far and somehow he can't hit the target. And that really should have been 1-0 to West Brom. But all the early signs were positive. We were pressing and looking very strong. And as Niang goes on an absolutely fantastic run here, he takes the ball past his man and shoots. He takes a deflection off Albiol. But Raphael makes the save and it's cleared away by Napoli so we kept the pressure on very early on in this game we were looking quite threatening we just couldn't seem to get ourselves the early gold we really did need and in the 37th minute, Napoli had a great chance to make us pay for that as Jorginho finds Rondon here. Very, very good opportunity as they work the ball inside towards the box. The shot's taken, it's blocked, it falls to Insigne and Lorenzo Insigne has the ball in the back of the net for Napoli but thankfully for us, it's chalked off for offside and correctly so. Very, very tight but as you can see, Nastasic pulled up at the last minute, uh, sorry, pushed up at the last minute and it was indeed offside. So still nil-nil but after that uh, disallowed goal, we became a little bit shaky and a little bit jittery and as I give the ball away with Creswell here it's a great chance for Napoli and this time Insigne has the ball in the back of the net but it's going to count because his shot is uh, not saved by Foster although he does get a glove on it it finds the back of the net and it's Napoli 1 West Brom 0 and it's my fault for a stupid pass out with Creswell there I should have just hoofed it but I never liked doing that and Insigne punishes us so 1-0 to Napoli but it didn't change the game plan you know we still needed to score a goal so the goal it didn't exactly mean nothing but we still needed to score and our game plan was the exact Exact same. But in the 59th minute here, you see Craig Gardner get on the ball and spread it out wide towards Niang, into his man, then into Anicha B, then back to Niang. He wins the header, it hits the post, but it falls back to Niang, and Niang equalizes on the stroke of the hour mark. So when Bay Niang gets the goal there, it was a really nice move as well. Henderson, Anicha B, and Niang, a free passing triangle there. Lovely little uh, lovely little build up. Good ball inside. The header by Niang was one, it hit the post, but thankfully, as you can see, it falls straight back to him, and he has an open goal from one yard out. He is not going to miss even though he's right next to the post so it is indeed Napoli 1 West Bromwich Albion 1 as Foster can celebrate there we got ourselves the level up we've got ourselves the away goal it's what we needed and we have got it through Niang he gets his sixth goal in the Europa League he's going for the uh, golden boot in both the Europa League and the Premier League crazy good season for him but uh, Gulam strikes the ball from a free kick here in a 66th minute and almost catches out Ben Foster very good save by our skipper there otherwise Napoli would have been back in front and from the corner, Insigne crosses the ball in and uh, Enrique wins the header, but Foster deals with it. And we quickly launch a throw out towards Anichibi, who flicks it onto Niang. It's a great chance on the break as he takes the ball around Maggio here, down his left-hand side. He beats the number 11 for pace. Ball roll, reverse step over into a Berber spin, beats him. Then a roulette to beat Enrique. Wonderful run, but Rafael makes a great save and Wellington Silva can't turn in the rebound. And another great chance goes begging. So still 1-1. We knew that if we got ourselves an away goal, there'd surely be no way 
way to, no way back for Napoli because they'd have to score two late on in this game. But as Maggio beats Abita and crosses the ball in, the uh, ball falls to Jorginho at the far post and eight yards out misses a brilliant chance as he blazes the ball over and out for a goal kick. What a chance to win the game for Napoli late on, but he didn't take it. And because of that, the game finishes at 1-1, 2-2 on aggregate, one away goal each, which means we go into extra time in this Europa League quarter final. And in the 94th minute here, Napoli get the ball forward and the header goes wide at the post and out for a goal kick for a free kick. And in the 170th minute, it was still 1-1. It looks as though penalties are on, car on the cards. But as Niang, Ronaldo chops around Jose Callahan here and scores the goal. Unfortunately for us, Napoli, who also had a disallowed goal in this game, see us have a disallowed goal as well. Creswell spreads the ball through to Niang and he is just offside, just like Insigne was. It was a brilliant finish after Ronaldo chop, but it won't count. And that does mean that the game finishes 1-1, 2-2 on aggregate, and we go into a penalty shootout here in Italy. So it's the second penalty shootout of the series. Of course, we lost the first one, which is against Manchester United in the Capital One Cup, all the way back in like episode four or five, something crazy like that. So we take on Napoli in the penalty shootout to see who will be going through to the Europa League semi-finals. And, you know, to be honest, my, my penalty taking record isn't the best. You guys did see me lose the shootout to United. I wasn't really fancying my chances, but we do have some very, very good goal scorers in this team, even though their penalty taking record isn't the best. You know, we got the uh, players like Niang on the pitch. Obviously, uh, Danny Ings, who I brought off for an be as well. Craig Gardner and Chris Brunt, both very, very decent as well. So I really did fancy my chance in this penalty shootout, even though so far we are 0 for 1 in our record. But still, I made some adjustments to the lineup. I thought I'd give Niang fifth penalty taking duty. Uh, keep Brunt and Gardner as the first two because they are our strongest. And Mertens would take the first penalty for Napoli as Ben Foster was trying to put him off, but unfortunately he couldn't, and Mertens got the goal. So 1 0 to Napoli from the spot. Chris Brunt would stand up and take our first one, and despite Despite Raphael going the right way, Brunt scores. So good to get off the mark straight away. Gulan would then stand up and take a penalty here against Ben Foster. And the captain makes the save. Ben Foster getting his leg to the ball and keeping it a 1-1. And as Craig Gardner sends Raphael the wrong way on the following penalty, that gives us the lead in the shootout at 2-1. So good that Ben Foster made the save there. We take the lead in the shootout. In the stood up to take the next one and scored it. He blasted it right down the middle. And the score was back to 2-2. We had a penalty in hand though. And Creswell scored that one as the left back puts it past Raphael just. And it's 3-2 and we're back in the lead. Uh, Exaberia would then stand up for Napoli. And he would also score. Sends Ben Foster the wrong way. So only one penalty missed so far. But as Danny Ings takes this penalty, he also scores. Puts it into the top corner. Which means with this penalty, Vargas must score for Napoli. Otherwise, they are out. I try and tell him where I'm going. And I do. But he goes there anyway. And Vargas misses the penalty for... Foster comes up big in the shootout with two penalty saves and we go through to the Europa League semi-final. So what a fantastic game, what a fantastic tie. We are through on penalties and I just couldn't believe this but after the game, how casual was that for celebrations? Ben Foster did like a slight fist pump and that was it. Nobody seemed to care. I was like, are you serious? This is one of the best results of the season. How are you not going absolutely mental seeing the staff and the subs run on the pitch? What's going on? But uh, anyway, hopefully that's something that EA will look into in the future future, make it a bit more enigmatic in celebrations when penalty shootout to one, but uh, still, we did indeed win the shootout, we are through to the Europa League semi-finals, absolutely delighted. We'll be taking on Sporting CP, the Portuguese side, as Chelsea take on Zenit St. Petersburg in the other semi-final tie. So, absolutely delighted to have got ourselves to the semi-finals. I, I honestly felt as though quarter-finals would probably be the best we could do in the Europa League with, you know, two knockout stages before that stage and, of course, a very tough group stage. I thought quarter-finals would be the best, but to go one step further and reach the semis, I'm absolutely delighted. And there's no reason why we can't go on and reach the final because I do believe we can beat uh, Sporting after we've already knocked out Liverpool and... And Napoli. But as you can see, I gave uh, Nietzsche a new contract. I'll wait and see what he says because even though he didn't play too well in that game, I would still like to keep him here as his contract is up at the end of the year. Uh, I also requested for some more funds from the board. I asked for £2 million. They give us 1.4. So that's not too bad. Uh, that'll help us sign a scout at the end of the season, a five star experience and judgment scout, which I'll be going in for. And then the worst possible news Nietzsche turns down his contract and says he's going to let his contract expire and move on at the end of the season. So that's gutting. I'm hoping. Hopefully I'm going to change in each of his mind, but it's still a real shame. 
and uh, hopefully he will change his mind in the future. But the last thing you'll see is we had an international management offer from Chile, and if you could leave a comment and tell me what player I wouldn't mind using in that Chile side, then please do so. It'll be interesting to see how many of you are long-term subs. But as always, guys, a big thank you for watching the video. Really hope you have enjoyed it, and if you have enjoyed the episode, then please do leave a like, and I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon.